Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Into the Vault, the show where we reach back into the Disney vault, pull out a movie, and find out if it was a hidden treasure, or if it was locked away for our own good. Like Song of the South. <laughs> yeah, like Song of the South, the most perfect movie. I was I was talking about doing your podcast at work today, they're like, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, oh, I'm doing this podcast. I'm like, And I explained it, and they're like, oh, like Song of the South, like that's an example of something that should live in the... <laughs> In the vault, I was like, I hope we're not watching that movie. Um, I feel like I have to, I have to like quit being a comic if I talk about Song of the South on a podcast. It like just like ixnay my career right away. <laughs> it's like we watch it. I'm like, no, it should be out. <laughs> no, we should watch it all the time. It's great. I'm your host, Garrison McCraw. <laughs> And with me today is Tim Watt. That's Tim. me. I'm Tim Watt. Whoa. I, I was going to do this whole bit where it's like, you're shrunk. Where'd you go? But you already talked, so it's, it's ruined. Don't do that joke. No, it's, it's ruined bad, now. It's a bad joke. No, it's, it would have been hilarious. Do you, want, you want me to go back and uh, no. can edit it? No, it's ruined. It's ruined? Okay. Yeah, we're done. No. Harrison, I need you to know how committed I am to doing this podcast. <laughs> yeah? I, I drove an hour from my house through traffic. I, I paid tolls to be here. Uh, because I, I mapped it out and it said it was an hour and a half without tolls, so I had to pay tolls. It's weird. It only takes me like forty minutes to get to your house. Well, it's because you're going the other way. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how. Where that's the roads how Orlando are shorter. Works. Yeah, Orla- yeah. The roads are shorter when you go towards Orlando, but you want to get out of it. It's like nope. <laughs> it like <laughs> does like leave. corkscrews and spirals for no reason. The city makes no sense. <laughs> the, the, the traffic is just like just, I was in Atlanta. Like I was in Atlanta this weekend. Yeah, and they were like. Like, people are like, oh, the traffic here is awful. I'm like, no, the traffic here makes sense. <laughs> because, like, they have, like, lanes where you can pay money to be in a faster lane. Orlando's like, that sucks. You should just, uh, uh, should, you should have just left earlier. You shouldn't, like, you shouldn't have option. left your house. Yeah, like, why did you leave? Don't be here. You should here. work from home. So, I know, we're watching Honey, Shrunk the Kids. It's a 19, what is it? A 1989 classic starring Rick Moranis. Um, yeah, Jim, what do you think? Have you seen I, this movie? I've seen this movie. I know I've seen the movie. Yeah. Because it's just one of those that I think everyone has seen. I don't remember anything about the film. I remember the attraction and being terrified and like running out when I was a kid. Yeah. I don't I don't like like when it's a theater and things happen. Like uh like like what is it, a bug's life or whatever? Yeah. That that one. Yeah, for those who don't know, uh there was a Honey I Shrunk the Kids uh attraction in Epcot, uh near, in the Imagination Pavilion where I thought it was I thought there was one in MGM Studios. Yeah. It was wait, so it was in both? Yeah. There were so two it was Honey Epcot Sh- first and then it I don't know what was first. I just know one was the forty attraction like you were talking about. Right. Where you put on the glasses and it's like you're shrunk now. Well, oh my well, god, there's a big like a, snake in front of look you. Look at this big pencil. Yeah. <laughs> and then in Hollywood Studios they had the uh playground where it was like uh, you got to run around like giant like set pieces where it's like here sit on this ant. I remember I remember both of those. Yeah. I, I remember, maybe maybe when I was a kid. There goes my entire the trivia world. segment at the end of the show. I'm just kidding. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll rearrange it. Let's rank but, the movie now too. Why but, not? Uh, four. Four. <laughs> I don't know what the scale is, but uh, four. it's a smaller scale because it's Honey Shrunk the Kids. Uh, uh, so four is good um, number. Yeah, I don't remember anything about the film. I, I do ever, however, see on the poster. Yeah. Um. Rick Moranis is the same character from Ghostbusters, and <laughs> same looking, character he plays in everything. He yes, he is Rick Moranis in yeah. every movie ever, and uh, he's like retired now, right? Yeah, because it's like always a big deal when he shows up to things. We're yeah. like, oh my god, it's Rick Moranis. I remember? Uh, anyway, so there's a dog, and there's children crossing from the dog's nose to his nose. Yep, and that's so, pretty much so all. So we I know. know the kids get shrunk, and the dog doesn't. Well, how do we know? We don't know the full size of the dog. <laughs> You're right. Maybe it was a much larger dog who shrunk to it's, a medium it's size. Honey, I shrunk the kids, and then the sequel is Honey, I shrunk the dog, but, but only not, a little bit. Only a little bit, <laughs> because it was a little bit too large for our one bedroom apartment. But so now he sh- fits through the doggy door much better. Yes, that's the sequel. Two, two. <laughs> um, I was going to leave this for trivia, but why not? Let's just do it since you mentioned it. Yeah, Rick Moranis. Ha- um. Rick Moranis is retired. Uh, his last movie actually was a Disney film, Brother Bear 2. Okay. I yeah. didn't know there was a second Brother Bear. Was it's, the first one good enough to be a sequel? I don't no. remember liking that movie. <laughs> it's just okay. It's like Pocahontas, but like with bears. Yeah, and Lion King, but with bears. Anyway, he came out of retirement to do Brother Bear 1, which I assume was easy. Because it's like, hey, can you just record some lines from your house 
and just email it in. And then they got him out of retirement again for Brother Bear 2. And now, I don't know if you know this, but Disney Plus is getting a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids series where they're bringing Rick Moranis out of retirement for a third time because he's going to be in the show. That's how you know Disney has a lot of money. Like, yeah. That man is retired. and He's, he's like, I just want to sleep. Well, like, what other movie he's been... He was in... He was in... Ghostbusters, so like yeah. that's a big franchise that he's probably still making uh, money off of. Like, what was the other? Like, what the are Brother movie? Bear franchise. The Brother Bear franchise. <laughs> the Honey I Shrunk the Kids franchise. Was he in? Was he in Revenge of the Nerds? Uh, uh, Spaceballs. Spaceballs. That was the big one. So, like, uh, and uh, what's the? It's a plant. It's gonna eat you. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah. So like, those are big franchises. Probably still making money off of, and Disney may, will spend so much money that he's like, I'll just stop playing pinball. Yeah, in my house to come out and do this. That's crazy. It is. All right. Um, I think we should watch this movie. Come do back. Do you want to get? Do you want me to guess the plot? Tim, what do you think the plot of the movie? Thank you be? for asking unpromptedly. No problem. Uh, so I think that the plot of Honey I Shrunk the Kids is that Rick Moranis is in a pickle. Um, he, he and it's really sour. It's yes, and <laughs> and he needs to sweeten it, and so he gets honey. And he pours it on the pickle, but it, the pickle slips. And now it's on the ground. And and um, and the kids, they run through the kitchen where the pickle, honey pickle is. And they slip on it. And now they, he needs to wash his clothes, the clothes of the kids. And then he shrinks them. He shrinks the kids' clothes. <laughs> honey pickle. I shrunk the pickle and the kids and their clothes. Shrunk them. Great. Let's watch the movie. All right, and we are back. We have just finished Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Mm. Tim, do you feel like you've grown as a person? I, I do feel like I've grown as a person. Uh, the message of the movie has made me grow both in stature and emotional maturity. And literally because of the shrink rays and the growing portion yes. of the shrink yeah, ray. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's just get into what this thing is. So the movie takes place in this small suburban town of who knows where. Just think of any suburbs. Mm -hmm. That's how a lot of the movies in the 80s were. It was just like, this is a family, and they live in home and neighborhood. Don't you relate, kids? You also live in home and neighborhood, just like these kids. You can be Hollywood kid, too. (laughs) 80s. Yeah, so we have a scientist um, and inventor, Wayne Zalinski. Wayne Zelinsky. Wayne Zelinsky, that's right. Mike, was that Wayne Zelinsky? Wayne Uh He's created a shrink ray that, um, well, it's not really shrink ray yet. Right now it's just a blow stuff up ray, which, you know, I yeah, I think I, it's just as I, good of an invention. I get, well, technically, is this, is this neighborhood like Cape Canaveral or is it like Houston? Because... Because he goes, one of the big plot points is he goes and presents this ray that doesn't work to NASA, I guess. Yeah. And told them, like, oh, hey, guys, if we could make people really small, it would be really easy to take them to space. And then, like, it just doesn't work. So so that's kind of part of the problem. So he, he has some kind of thing with NASA. So yeah. he's in somewhere where that is a thing. I guess California has yeah. NASA, too. And instead of inventing, like, a new space shuttle, he's like... Why don't we just shrink everything? Yeah. Which, I don't know, maybe we'll save you on gas. That's pretty good. It's true. Let's think about the physics. Of that. Would that actually work? Like, if you made something really small, would that make it easier for it to go through, like, to go into space? Because it's all about thrust to get you out into Maybe the it's atmosphere. more like storage. Maybe, I okay, guess. think about it. If you, if a space shuttle can only hold a certain amount of fuel at a time. Mm hmm. Like, if you had, like, fuel, tiny boxes of fuel reservoirs that are shrunk down, and then you burned up the first batch, then you expanded the second batch mm-hmm. and dumped that in. That That is a very good point, where you could... You, the whole fuel problem to get to Mars and that like, we're having at the moment yeah. wouldn't Food, be water. They could shrink down, like, waste. Climate change would be, not be an issue. Yeah. Man. I want to live in this universe. This is great. Um, but it's not working again. It's just destroying things, which he could probably sell that too. Just a laser. Yeah, you think the government would be like, oh, you, it won't shrink things, but it can destroy things. Sign us up. <laughs> we'll Especially do it. during like eighty nine, like you're like, yeah, man, uh, the Cold War. Not to go into the Gulf War. Like yeah. it's like, yep, yeah, this is it. It's done. 
Let's take this laser. <laughs> Bush is like, sign me up. I don't think, I don't know. But now Bush was, I don't know. They're asking me to do history. That's a whole, no one's asking me. But in my mind, people are like, giving, like, there's a lot of pressure. Bush will be president eventually. At some point. At like one point. of the Bushes. Yeah. <laughs> the <There's> Bush Eye. <laughs> is that the plural for yeah. Bushes? Bush yeah. Eye. The Bush, the Bush Eye presidency. Yeah. All right. We also have this amazing cast of kids. We have the smart one, the girl, the boy, and the other boy. Yeah, there's there's Jock, kind of. Yeah. Um, Jock. Short kid, uh, smart kid. Girl. Girl. Yeah. Two taller ones, two smaller ones. Yep. So they can like pair up and be friends or whatever. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um, so one of them is playing baseball one day, like their neighbors... And hits the ball into Zaleski's lab, hits the machine, and they're all like, great. Now we have to go get that baseball. But the baseball, you know, starts, you know, wiring up the machine. And it zaps all four of them. I forgot how they all got in the same place. Yeah, like, they go up there. It's really weird. Like, the first, like, 30 minutes of the movie is a little messy. It's a lot of, like... Just kind of irreverent, just random yeah. storyline kind of stuff, which I actually kind of found kind of enjoyable because it kind of makes you relaxed in the movie. And then all of a sudden it escalates when these people are small, or should yeah. I say de escalate because they were now small. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's kind of messy in how they all get in the same room, but they're all in the same room and the, and the, and the machine turns them small. Yep. They are small now. So, that, so Zaleski comes home, sweeps up his lab. And accidentally ends up sweeping up all the four kids and throwing them away and placing them at the other end of his yard. So now we have our movie. Right. The kids have to make this journey from one end of a backyard to the other. Right. And at this point, Night at the Museum 2 had not come out. So they did not have the idea to find a squirrel and ride it, just like in uh, Night at the Museum 2. That's a really deep pool that I think is only for my dad. So my dad is, like, obsessed with Night at the Museum My 2. dad's n- obsessed with Night at the Museum I, 2. What is it with old, like, 40-year-old men? My dad's, like, 50 it's now. It's not even like, Night at Museum 1 or 3. It's, it's just specifically two. 2. What is it? We Literally, like, we'll have people over the house, and they'll just be like, my dad will be like, have you seen Night at the Museum 2? And they're like, no. He's like, What? My dad and will just quote it. Yeah. All, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Like, and I have come back to life. And it's like, Dad, no one what cares is this about this movie. Dress? And it, and it's Do so we funny. have to wear it too? Sam and I were on vacation, my, my girlfriend Sam and I, and, and I referenced Night at the Museum too. And then she's like, I feel like you only know that because of how many times your dad probably made you watch that movie. I'm like, yeah. Like a lot of people, they had really crappy childhoods and like abuse and all that other stuff. The worst thing my dad ever did was just make us consistently watch Night Vision 2, like, once a week. <laughs> like, it was, like, a part of the thing. He's like, listen, listen, we're going to pray, we're going to read God's Word, and we're going to watch Night of the Museum 2, and our family will stay together. <laughs> like, that was my dad's gospel, and it was great. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, back uh, to this movie. Yeah, so the kids are like, well, we have to make it from one in the backyard to the other. <laughs> no squirrels at our disposal at all. Uh, so they start their journey. They calculate it's about three miles, and they say it like it's a super long distance, yeah. like a two day journey. Yep. Well, for a kid, I remember like think like I remember the first time I was ever asked to run a mile as a child. They're like, "We need you to run a mile," and I'm like, "That's a thing. Like, you that's, can't run a you mile. Can't run a mile. That's like what cars do." <laughs> so I get where their heads are at. Maybe I could do it on a bike. Maybe. Maybe. If yeah. I have a bottle of water in my sack. My sack? Because when you were a kid, you had a sack. Yes. Whatever happened to that as adults, we just stopped carrying sacks. Yeah. Now it's like a, it's a style choice to carry a sack. Yeah. Like as a kid, it was a requirement. <laughs> Where else are you going to put your marbles? Well, right. That's the, that's the problem with us adults. We don't carry our marbles anymore. We lost our marbles. Oh, man. <laughs> Can't play for Can keeps. Can you like edit in like a... Like a like, like when I say that, I'll take that sound you lost, just made. Lost our marbles, <laughs> and it's like slow, do it over and over it's again. Great. Um, so they they come across all these obstacles. Like a bee comes and picks up two of them. I think that th- this part intrigued me a lot because I think that our current problem uh, in our world of a bee shortage has to do with this movie. Because if you watch this as a kid and like you're immediately now terrified of bees. So every time you see a bee, you're going to kill it. 
Like, right? no, no, those are the things are, that almost murder me. Bees if are I were very important, guys. Bees, yeah. they, they are the life force. Like, we could not eat without bees. They are the super pollinators. So do not listen to this propaganda that Disney has done. Okay? Bees are important. <laughs> yeah, you can't just hit them with a baseball bat every time they inconvenience you. Yeah, it's not a thing that's allowed. Nope. Uh, so... <laughs> So after they figure out the whole B incident, like two of the kids are separated from the other two, the sprinklers start going off, and they're playing the sound, like the sound editing is like bombs dropping. Yeah. Which was, it was fun. I have to say, is speaking of that point right there, the, the effects in this movie- They are wonderful. Are really good. There's something just about that practical yeah. special effect that, that it really amazes me. Like just some of the ways they did it, like they made choices of- uh, when it comes to the green screen of not... They, they made really bold choices to make sure that, like, the kids, when they were small, they didn't... They weren't, like, directly in front of the green screen. So it was almost like there would be, like, another... They would be next to, like, another big prop, prop item that would be like, oh, this is a broom, and if it was really big. And then they would have the green screen behind the broom. Mm-hmm. So it was more of, like, you're focusing on the kids next to the broom instead of the kids next to the green screen. Yeah. Which they would made have it like, very impressive. Like, it really worked well. And then they would kind of blur it out because that's what would happen yeah. if you were that big. And it looked really good, blurry. but, like, as an adult watching it, it was so fun to kind of, like, try to figure out, like, what these big props were. So it's, like, exterior shot of, like, the broom, and then it cuts to the kids small, and, like, the broom bristles, bristles coming towards them. You're like, oh, it's probably, like, a curtain that they're just, like... Pushing towards the yeah. camera, and then and then he sweeps him into a, like a dustpan. Dust like, and... It's just like a slide, yeah. just a pink slide that they're carefully editing, like having only part of it in frame to look like, yeah, you know this thing. So yeah, the effects were were really cool. But and... yeah, but, but for the for the water part that we were speaking to, uh, it was literally just like just like big globs of water that would just like explode from the crown, which was really neat. Those are, so yeah. it kind of added to that yeah. that feeling of being um, small. The one kid, girl. We're going to call her girl. girl. Uh, she almost drowns, and they save her with some CPR. Yeah, okay. You so have I a problem wanna, with this. I, I had a fundamental issue with this. So I, I, I'm a registered <laughs> CPR instructor, and I watched it, and, and he's only giving breaths. And the problem with that is that the, the thing with CPR is the compressions are the most important part of CPR. So him giving breaths would have done nothing. And so I just had a lot of problems with that. Really teaching kids the wrong form of CPR. Um, so yeah, yeah. That's but it all. worked though. It shouldn't have. Oh, okay. I, she should have died. Oh. <laughs> she should have died. And uh, and I'm I'm mad that up, she's alive. I'm upset that she's alive. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, that's just how I feel. <laughs> so the kids keep going, uh, traversing through this. Uh, jungle of a backyard meanwhile we have two different sets of parents the scientist and his wife who are having some relationship issues up until this point yeah i don't know and then they like resolve it really quickly they do and 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 it's interesting because i thought when i first start watching the movie i was like oh i thought they were like getting a divorce but it just more seems uh, something like she just got stressed out and left like they really don't go into any detail on why they were fighting it was just like, oh, they're both, uh, you know, stressed out adults and yeah. they have issues. So that, that was interesting. It was like Disney wanted to make a statement about like, oh, maybe the nuclear family isn't all that it's cut out to be. But like they just didn't because it wasn't time yet. Like it yeah. was just like, guys, it's 1989. We're not allowed to say anything yet. Like, <laughs> So Wayne quickly figures out like kind of what happened to the kids because he like sees like the baseball in the mm. lab and he, the kids have been missing for a little bit. And, like, he very quickly puts all the pieces together, which I appreciate, because usually parents in movies, like, see all these obvious hints and don't put two and two together. Yeah. yeah. So I really appreciated that. Meanwhile, uh, boy and taller boy, <laughs> their parents, like, have no idea what's going on. They're calling the police, mm-hmm. trying to get them involved. They're, They're doing what good parents should, yeah. which is call the police. So, so we cut back to the kids, and they happen upon this giant um, oatmeal cream pie cookie, this which part, I remember as a kid thinking that scene was so delicious. Like, I can only imagine shrinking down and seeing a giant oatmeal cream pie, and then just, like, tearing bits off and just getting handfuls of cream. Mm-hmm. Watching it now, I'm like, yeah, it that cookie dirty. was it looked, been on the floor, yeah. and Ant was just crawling on it. Yeah, it, it was really disgusting. Yeah. It's also interesting that they did not get 
a commercial deal with Oreo. Like, it's it just kind of the way it was shot. It was like, they wanted this to be an Oreo, yeah. but, they, but Oreo wouldn't do it. So they had to do oatmeal cream pie. And like, that was interesting to me. But yeah, it was really gross. And then they meet an ant. Yep. There's an ant. They bond with it uh, using a piece of the cookie, like, you know, the whole like string with the food tied yeah. to it, placed in front of the animal. Uh, they bond with it that way. Not after first trying to just jump on it and it just mm-hmm. continuously bouncing them off. Because mm-hmm. it looked, I guess it was made of rubber. Mm-hmm. I guess it was a rubber ant. Yeah. <laughs> you, the, they were very bouncy. The ant, you could tell, was like two guys in a suit. Yeah. That were it just, was a really cool effect, though. Like, yeah. there's times I'm like that stop motion, times I'm like, it looks like a puppet. Mm-hmm. It, like, the the ant effect was was very well done. Uh, they do other fun things like fall asleep in a giant Lego brick. Um, but then tragedy strikes when a backyard scorpion. Yeah, there's like a scorpion in this yard. Like what? <laughs> I mean, we live in Florida. Maybe this is regular other places. Like someone in Minnesota is like, well, you guys don't have. Oh, you don't have. You know. <laughs> I'm Irish. He's just Irish Minnesota. Oh, you, oh, don't, you don't have. have... You don't have yeah, scorpions. What are you doing if you don't even have a scorpion in your backyard? <laughs> um, yeah, the scorpion murders the ants. Yeah, they have this fight scene which was very intense. It was two stop motion scorpion versus ant, and the scorpion shoves its tail spike into the ant, and it dies. The ant dies. It's the normal trend of Disney, always yeah, killing, killing off a character. It's not a Disney movie unless someone dies. Like that's an ant, like Ant Man. Mm-hmm. Ant Man dies. Anthony. Anthony. This ant's name was Andy, which I appreciated. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing. It's the it's exact same. In fact, Ant Man stole that from this. You think so? The sad dead ant thing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if Paul Rudd like asked for that to be in there. He's like, I want that as a kid. Screw you, Disney. You're fixing this. I want an ant thing, and then they killed that his ant aunt too. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Um, a lot of the other parts of the movie is just the parents looking through the backyard trying to find their kids or talking to the police. We don't have to go. It, we don't have to get into detail about it. Yeah, the, every time I watch movies from the '80s and like. I always realize it's just such a different time because the police show up at the the parents' home and was like, "Hey, we got reports of a missing kid," and the the cops, or no, the parents were like, "Oh no, it must have been wrong. Uh, the kids are in the backyard," and then the cops just leave. <laughs> like that's just like not a thing that would happen like, nowadays. Can we like, can see, we see the, the kid? kids? <laughs> can we see the kid? Can we like talk to you? Like the parents would be going to jail. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent nowadays. It's like they're still definitely missing. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we have this. The whole movie is just a series of like, what could go wrong now? Mm-hmm. Uh, so next is someone turns on the lawnmower, and it starts you know tossing and blades I- of grass and blades of lawnmower. Every which way. At this point in the film, due to the tragedy of Andy the ant, I was thoroughly ready for the kids to also be murdered. <laughs> I was like, I think this is the way this movie is going to end. It's just these kids. It's like Toy get Story Three. Up. Yep, they're all holding hands. Yep, and that's how it is. And all of a sudden, they just all die, and they show it all of it. And it's like that's the end, kids. Your parents get divorced, then you die. <laughs> that's the story. <laughs> the American dream. Sadly. We don't get to learn this lesson because the kids survive. <laughs> and we have to go on our lives not learning any moral like <laughs> lessons or anything about morality or mortality yeah. even. So the kids survive. They make their way into the house. Almost, uh, oh, because they call for the dog. And they get on the dog's fur and the dog brings them to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. One ends up in a bowl of cereal. The kid's like, no, don't eat your own son. And... Wayne's about to until the dog bites him. Then yeah. he looks down. He's like, and he doesn't look shocked. He's not like, oh my god, I almost ate my kid in my bowl of Cheerios. He's like, oh, there you are. Hey, we found we him. Found. All right. Which is kind of Wayne's whole character. It's just, <laughs> just like nothing shocks him. He's like, oh okay. Like, it's just <laughs> this whole thing, and it's so funny. Rick Moranis is great in this film. He is. He, his his timing is just so good because he's like. This super nerdy character, but he's also smart. So like the neighbor parents like would keep like asking questions, and he would just come up with like these awesome responses, which were super funny. Like what was one? 
what what was like it was something about I don't remember. This is such <laughs> You guys great. think uh, the when the dad's like, You guys just think I'm idiots, don't you? And he just says nothing. Yeah. <laughs> just looks at him. Yeah. It was yeah, good. There was, there was some good moments in that. Um Yeah, and they fix the kids, everything's great, and the kids are all friends. And girl one and tall boy one are now together. They are together now. Yeah. And that's the whole movie. Yeah. I think there's a moral... There's two morals to this. Yes. The first one is that the parents saw the children as small. Like, they weren't paying attention to them. Yeah. And that was, like, a big theme at the beginning of the movie. And so because of that, now they really are small and you don't see them anymore. So pay attention to your kids. That's actually, like, an important thing. Like, you should treat your kid, your children like they're people. Second thing is... <laughs> Um, I think NASA is to blame on this because when his invention didn't work, like they, they, um, made fun of him and all this other things, which caused him to go home and like frustratingly like mess with his machine and almost kind of break it and then start to sweep things up. And had that not have happened, I think that the kids would have been fine and none of this would have happened. I think they would have found him on the floor, brought them back to normal, sold the laser to NASA Everybody's good. We're great. But that's not what happened. So, so thanks NASA. a lot, NASA. Always Bunch of NASA. jerks. First, they're like, oh, we landed on the moon. We know better. <laughs> yeah. And then two, they made fun of Wayne Z- Zawinski. So. Yeah. Yep. Two wrong things. Two wrong things. Two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah. So some fun facts about this movie. Obviously, we talked already about the um, two attractions that they had already uh, created before and are now gone. Because uh, Disney hates fun. Um, there was the it's giant true. playground. That's why Bob Iger stepped down. He's like, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you can have it. All right, thanks, Bob. <laughs> um, yeah, there was the 4D attraction and then the big physical playground over at uh, uh, Hollywood Studios, Epcot, respectively. Uh, but there's still references to Wayne Zaleski in Epcot. Yeah, in the... In, in the um... Journey, uh, Journey, through, Journey imagination. Through, through Imagination. Yeah. In, in the, the queue, we yeah. have um, references to Wayne Zaleski. And actually, there's a reason I had you do this episode. Right, because we watched the computer <laughs> wore tennis shoes and that there was a reference to that yep. film in, in, yep, the, in the ride as well. Yep. So yep. next time, I'm going to have you on for Flubber. I love <laughs> Flubber so much and I'm so excited. Or The that. Absent-Minded Professor, which is... The sequel to... No, the... Flubber is a re- remake of The Absent-Minded Professor. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I'm going to have you on for the Imagination Trilogy. <laughs> is there like a... This is like such a side conversation, but like is there... So like there's the Robin Williams yes. Flubber. Is there another Flubber than that one? Yeah, they're Absent-Minded Professor. I understand. Yeah. Okay, so all right. So I've not seen The Absent-Minded no. Professor. No, Flubber is a remake of that. Right. Okay. Yeah. I love Flubber. It's such a good <laughs> All right. I love the part when he's doing the thing with the with the eggs and it doesn't. Yeah. I don't know if that'll happen in the absolute progress. I hope it does. <laughs> if it doesn't, it's getting like a negative six out of ten. No <laughs> eggs. No. <laughs> There's no, no eggs. eggs in this thing at all. So let's make something new. I know yeah. there's already been attractions for this, but they're gone because they weren't good enough. Because Disney was waiting for us to come up with a better idea. Okay. All right, Tim, hit me. What do you got? What park? What kind of attraction? Okay, is it a restaurant? I've got, I've got two ideas flowing around All right, my head. Cool, cool. The first one I think would fit well in Disney Springs. Actually. Okay. And the reason for it is we're, we're in this big craze right now of escape rooms. Yeah. Right? And so I think it would be a really cool thing where you could do an escape room with a pre-show where the pre-show is you're in the room and blah, 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 and then all of a sudden you're shrunk down. Oh, that's like cool. That shrinks you down. And now you're in this gigantic room and everything is big and all that other stuff and you have to figure out your way out and into the other rooms to then get back to the porch like on the film and then that way they can bring you back and and make you and you can have like elements from the movie in there like you have to you have to like put find the cookie piece and put it in front of the ant and then the ant will like unlock the next door so there would be normal classic escape room stuff that you would you would have to do puzzles but also if you had seen the movie there are certain elements that would help, but it's not impossible to do the escape room if you haven't seen them. Right. It's just that it does make it, it easier <laughs> to to do that. So and I think that'd be awesome. something you could charge for. It'd be kind of like in the same element as the void, like yeah. an extra 
like it's like a, it's like a ticket. So when you mentioned Disney Springs, my brain immediately jumped to like, oh, the void would be cool. Like you could VR yourself into That'd this cool. reality of everything being like huge. But what was cool about the movie was that everything was so practical. Yeah. And like, if you wanted to like shrink things down in a VR setting, like I think Ant Man would be a better like um, medium for that because mm-hmm. that movie is very CG when they shrink down. Sure. Um, whereas this one's very much set. So yeah, an escape room would make a lot more sense with the feel of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would really like that. That'd be cool. And then like, you have to like stop the lawnmower. Yep. It's like, you know, every escape room's like, you have to get there in six seconds before X, Y, and Z thing. Like the Russians shoot a nuke at you, you yeah. know? Always the Russians. It's always the Russians always in an escape Russians. room. Um, so, oh, that, so yeah, that's my first one. Do you have an idea and then I can share my second one? No, share your second one. So my second one uh, would fit in Hollywood Studios and um, how I think it would work is basically uh, you arrive at a building, it's kind of like a warehouse looking thing, and uh, Wayne Zielinski invited you to a party. <laughs> and uh, Wayne Zielinski invited you to a party and while you're throughout, when you're through in the queue, you can also um, pull up the My Disney Experience app and play trivia <laughs> about the 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 film and, and things and you can also see the kids kind of texting each other it's like a it's like a new yeah, kind of sure. reboot of it uh, and then uh, you go into different pre-show rooms and there's these uh, attendants that are kind of spilling to you being like hey man we're really excited for you to come to the small party you know the shrinky shrink down party uh, and then they, they get you through that and then they bring you to these these shrink down party buses and there's these Small party you know, they, they bring you on, then you go into the next Is room. this your, in, in Conan, every time <laughs> <laughs> Paul Rudd is on, That's, and he shows the clip from, what was it? Uh, uh, whatever movie. Whatever movie, yeah. every time, yeah. every time you're here, you're just going to pitch to me the party bus. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Anyways, I'll continue. Yeah. So, uh, so they get in the party bus, and then the next scene is Wayne Zielinski, um, you know, uh, yep. <laughs> uh, shrinks you down, and then you go into another room, and there's like big screens and things like that, and things move around because things are really big. Yeah. And then you go into the end of it, and then you're, you're you know you're um, put back to normal. There's a part then... where it's there's a part where it's like put down your shrink ray. I have a shrink ray, so put yours down. Yeah, and, he and he's like, like, I have a bigger shrink. Mine's ray. a whole lot yeah. bigger. And then he's like, Hey, man, I got this. I got this. Uh, I got this shrink ray ironed. <laughs> like that's one of the jokes in it. Yeah, it's just so good. Uh, and then you get to the end of it, um, and then uh, the attendant thanks you for coming to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Supercharged. <laughs> and that's the that's my second attraction. Uh, so you I guys th- can vote on the Twitter which <laughs> yeah. one you would like to see more. Um, option A, or the superior option B. <laughs> that is your choice. Or option C, don't, what I was thinking watching the movie, this isn't big. I just want like a mechanical bowl, but it's the ant. That's it. That'd be cool. <laughs> you just get I'd, on the ant, I'd be and you see that. how long you can stay on it while it like <laughs> tries to bounce you off. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> you can put that in the escape room, probably. Yeah, like at it's some like, point you gotta yeah. wrestle the ant. You, you have go, to like it stand just it. opens and it's like Mo, you must wrestle this ant. And it's like what? And like the, there's like a there's like an attractions attendant. And there's like wrestle the ant. You have to wrestle it. <laughs> We, none of us can leave. I can't clock out. <laughs> I can't clock out until you wrestle this ant. I was supposed to take my lunch half an hour ago. No one's wrestled the ant. The union's going to hear about this. <laughs> oh, man. So, Tim, do you think this movie should uh, be put back in the vault, locked away, or is it a hidden gem? What do you think? I, I think it's a hidden gem. And yeah. I say that lightly mostly because it's a very popular movie. Like, most yeah. people have seen it. But I... I think it's a great film, and, yeah. and it has multiple sequels, which yep. means it, it was successful. You pointed out it made a lot of money. It did. It uh, made a lot of money. Uh, like had an eighteen million dollar budget and made over two hundred million dollars. Like, like astounding. Yeah, difference. That, that's a good. That's a good amount of money. And and any movie with Rick Moranis in it, I'm always down. Yeah. Uh, he's just a great actor, and he's very funny. Um, so I I think yeah. it's a I think it's a I think there's job. a lot of slow moments because it's like. You know, those, like, late 80s movies, like, they didn't quite know how to be movies yet. They're very sleepy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's... I would say you should watch it, like, while you're, like, folding laundry or, like, doing something else. Yeah. Like, this isn't, like, a movie night, get everyone together kind of movie. Mm -hmm. It's a have-on in the background movie, but I definitely um, appreciate it for what it is. Uh, The effects are amazing. And the director, Joe Johnson... I uh, have to give him credit because he directed The Rocketeer, mm-hmm. um, Captain America First Avenger, tons of other great movies, and 
you know, if this led to those projects, I say good on him. Yeah, you know? agreed. But yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, thank you all for joining us here today. And now I'm going to shrink yeah. down. I'm shrinking. No. I'm, I'm very small now. Join us next week for Song of the South. <laughs>